Hello, hello, good evening. It's Monica from Life is Art, and it's Thursday. Let's create something a little new. <laughs> I'm just pulling up my video on the side. Usually I say it's Wednesday or it's Sunday. <laughs> but today is Thursday, and we are just going to have some fun creating. Um, I apologize for the postponement yesterday, but mom duties um, came into play and um, I had to take Joshua to a uh, cadet meeting and uh, so that was important to get that done. Hey Karen, nice to see you're watching. If you're popping on to watch, just say hello or howdy so I know you're here and we are going to be creating today a diamond fold card because usually on Wednesdays we do card making and Sundays we do scrapbooking but uh, Thursdays, we just decided to do what we do on Wednesdays. <laughs> We're not going to make this Thursday thing um, necessarily a regular thing. But, um, you know, here and there, we have those moments where we have to uh, readjust the schedule. So I hope you're having a lovely day. Um, I know the kids here in Ontario, Canada are back to school. And I have one who's in grade seven. And has been online for the last two and a half years and I have one who's doing his third yes third victory lap at high school <laughs> and he has he was also online um, and then my middle guy he graduated um, over a year ago so he's he's doing his own thing now um, so we are going to be using the um, crisp air collection this evening and let me just pull out my catalog to show you in case you haven't seen the gorgeousness that is crisp air all the beautiful fall leaves and foliage and florals and the beautiful colors and oranges and browns and greens and dark blues it's just so much fun so we're going to be using a piece of this um, blue pattern paper we're going to be using a couple colors of cardstock as well and we are going to be using the stamp of the month which is works really well with crisp air and it's called enjoy these moments and it's all about fall right here so lots of fun things on there we're going to be using some of the leaves and the sentiment <clears throat> and yeah and we're going to be doing a bit of a fun fold we're also going to throw a little bit of clear sparkles in there for some bling bling because we always got to have a little bling bling here and there. I know some of you, um, you know, it's just a prerequisite. You have to have some bling or some stickles on there, something to jazz it up. So let's get started with our diamond fold card. We're going to begin with a piece of the paprika cardstock from the collection. Pardon me, sorry. Oh, my, uh, <laughs> just had a moment there. Um, and this piece has been cut to four and a quarter by nine and three quarters. Okay, so four and a quarter by nine and three quarters. And again, it's the paprika cardstock. And we're going to do some scoring on this because it's a fold card. And so that implies that we're going to be doing some folding. And the best way to do that is with some score lines, making everything nice and precise. So we're going to be scoring with our piece horizontally and we're going to be scoring at five and a half inches now if you have a scoreboard go ahead and use that I'm going to use my ruler and my versamat I'm going to line it up here at five and a half and give it a good score just like that and then we also need our pencil and let me see if I actually have a pencil handy there we go oh it's a green one Brampton Clean City Committee nice <laughs> and what we want to do is we want to make a couple marks on here and we're going to make the marks working away on either side from the score line okay so we're going to go two and an eighth inches from the score line so some people might find the easiest thing is to put the score line um, right at the beginning here line it up and have your score line on the start. It might help if I didn't put it crooked. 
And then we're going to work two and an eighth inches. So there's one inch, two inch, and then an eighth is halfway between the inch line and the quarter inch line. So we're just making a little tiny tick there. Okay, and we're using our pencil. So if we want to, we can erase it later. Hey, Heather, nice to see you join in. And Carol's here too. Hello, hello, good evening. <clears throat> so for those of you who are just joining, we've got a four and a quarter by nine and three quarter inch piece of paprika cardstock. And we've scored it at the five and a half inch mark. And now we are making some little marks on either side of this score line at two and one eighth. So I'm going to go down to the bottom, starting at the score line here, and go one, two, and then make another mark halfway between that two inch and the two and a quarter. And then I'm going to turn my thing around because it's easy enough to just turn it around and line it back up here. And we're going to do the same thing on this side of the score line. So we marked on this side, the shorter side. Now we're gonna mark on the longer side. So we're gonna go one, two and an eighth and make a little mark, just a tiny little mark, just enough to see. And then we're gonna come down to the bottom and we're gonna mark one, two and an eighth, two and an eighth right there, okay? So now we have marks here and here and marks here and here. And what we want to do now is we want to join those marks together with a score line. So I'm going to move my paper and line it up a little bit <laughs> so I can see everything. And I'm going to start with this little mark right here at two and an eighth. And I'm gonna cross over the score line and go to the opposite corner or to the opposite two and an eighth mark and create my score line. I can hold it straight. There we go. So we've got a diagonal score line. So we have our vertical score line and now we've got our diagonal and now we want to cross over this way. So we're going to start over here at this mark at the top and we're going to go down to that mark down there at the bottom just like this. And I hope you can see that in the in the reflection. Sometimes if I move it, you can see it where the light hits it. And um, you can see, so we have our vertical score line and then we have our crisscross. And each of these points is two and an eighth inch from that score line to keep everything nice and even. I don't know if you can see it because I can't see my screen very well, <laughs> but that's okay. So what we're going to do now is we are going to push up these, um, the straight across score line. So we're going to kind of fold it up like that. We're going to make a mountain fold out of that one. And then you can kind of push that center point down where everything intersects, right? And then you can see what's going to happen as we kind of push these um, ones in the center up this horizontal line, these other angles, and we want to kind of keep that nice point in the center, these other angles are going to crease back. So they're going to go down and these sides are going to come up like so. And you kind of work your way around all four. And then when you give these two pieces a push in, and this is how it looked when we were scoring, actually this way, <laughs> but it's all good. When we push these two pieces in like this, the top will come up and we're just going to tip it over. And, but we want to make sure that this point stays as a point. So squish them together, push this down, and you sometimes have to kind of come in with your thumbnails or something and kind of give that a pinch so it goes to a point. And there we go. Now before we crease it down really hard, because I didn't use a scoreboard, I'm going to line it up, make sure my even edges are even, and then we can go ahead and crease that down with our handle of our scissors or our bone folder, whatever you use to put creases into things. And you're going to have to crease it good. Now it will still tend to do this. It's got a little bounce to it, you know, boing, boing, boing. <laughs> Everything needs a little bounce to it. Okay, so this is the base of our card. And when we open it up, 
it goes like this. It looks a bit like a tag or a house. Oh, this would be really cool for a welcome to your new house card if you did everything vertically, except for we're going to change it now. <laughs> but if you don't change it, that will make a cute new home card. So what we're going to do now is we're going to actually open it back up and we're going to lay it down with this short end um, so that we can measure on it. Okay, so if we lay it down, we'll see that it is a four and a quarter inches across and we want to mark it at two and an eighth inch. So we're going to come two and an eighth. So again, it's the two inch right between two inches and two and a quarter marked at two and an eighth. And so that's the same mark as what we did over here. So that makes it super simple. All of your little marks happen at two and one eighth. And now I need to reach way over here where I've got my little trimmer because the little trimmer works good for this or a big trimmer. But my big trimmer takes up so much room that this little trimmer is nice. What we need to do now, because we're trying to make a diamond, we've got one half of our diamond now we need to make the point on this side. So what we're going to do is we're going to trim from the point here where our crease line starts right down to this center point that we just marked at the two and an eighth, which is halfway in between. So we're going to cut from here to here, and then we're going to cut from here to here. And I want to show you a little bit of a trick, okay? So let's open this up, and we're going to slide it in. And we want to line up this, um, where this crease ends, and our center point. Just like that, okay? And we're gonna snip, and we're gonna knock a little triangle off, just like that, okay? And now we're gonna turn it, and we're going to line it up like this, and this is where the little trick comes in. If you have a trimmer that has a nice little line like this, you can line this edge that you just cut up with that. Then you can line up your center point. I'm pointing under the blade. Your center notch with your crease line over here and this. And then you know you have a nice 90 degree angle that you're cutting because this is a straight line, right? So now you know that you have cut a nice 90 degree corner. Sometimes that's the hard part, right? Is to just keep everything true and square when you're trimming things off and you can save those little triangles for something else. But now when we fold it down, we have created our diamond. How cute is that? How easy? That is the base of the card. Now it's just, um, now it's just decorating. So let me just see my video has gone kaput on me. <laughs> hey mom. Hey Carol. See, I knew there's more people on here sending me messages and I couldn't see them. Nice to see you guys are watching. So let's start with a little bit of decorating on the inside. Now we have this panel that's a weird shape, but we need a spot to do our writing. And we could just use this cardstock because we didn't use that darker of a color, but we want it to look a little nicer. So um, we're going to use some white daisy to add a piece on the inside of this card. So we have our white daisy here, and this has been cut to four by five and a quarter. Let me just double check that. Yes, four by five and a quarter. And then, and so if I lay it down here, you can see that there's a nice edge of the paprika showing, right? But we have to deal with this pointy bit. So here's where we do this. What we're going to do is we're going to line this up here on our Versamat, like so. And then we are going to do some marks with our pencil. And we're going to come two inches down on each side. You know what? I'm going to line the top of mine up to make it a little bit easier. Because <laughs> then I can just count down two inches. So we're going to come down two inches. One, two, and make a little mark. Just like that. Just a tiny mark. And then one, two on this side. So all our marks on the paprika were two and one eighth. Now our marks on this one are two inches. We don't have to deal with the one eighth anymore. Okay, and then we're going to also mark it in the center at two inches. So we have a mark at the top and then two inches down on either side. And that will give us a cutting guide for those 
um, little triangles we have to take out. So let's start just like we did before. We're going to line it up with the two inch mark that's going down the side and the two inch mark in the center at the top and trim that off. And then we can turn it this way and use that straight edge that we just cut up against our line and move it until we have our two um, marks lined up on the cutting edge and line it up so that we're, we know we're going to cut a nice 90 degree and then trim that. Lovely! See how easy that was? Ugh, just a little bit of a ruler and a little bit of a trim. Easy peasy. And then this fits now nicely in between with a nice little bit of paprika showing all the way around. Of course we could go back and do some erasering. Erasering? Is that a word? <laughs> Erasing to get rid of those um, little marks, but I'm actually going to glue it on the side with the marks because it's it works either way. And we're just going to glue this down, leaving that nice little paprika edge all the way around. Make sure it's centered and straight-ish. And there we go. We've got our nice little house inside of our diamond card. And then we also want to have a little bit of white space over here in case we want to do any extra stamping or any extra decoration or more space to write a message. And so I have cut a little square of white daisy cardstock and this is two and three quarter inch square. So two and three quarters by two and three quarters. There we go. And when I post the pictures, I will post the measurements as well. So don't worry. I will post all the little measurements. There we go. I don't post them with the video because <laughs> Facebook doesn't like me changing anything after I post the video, but I can add it on where the photos are. So there, we've decorated the inside with some white to give us a nice space. And then we're going to add a square on the front as well. And this is where we're going to bring in our pattern paper. So I've got this gorgeous sapphire pattern with this itty bitty teeny tiny leaf design all over it and that is such a great design for a small piece on a card the back side of this is that gorgeous paper that has all the squares um which is really pretty too but i was trying to keep it simple on this card because we're going to add some more detail and decorations to this front piece so glue that down like so and then this space over here looks a little bit blank so we're going to bring in a piece of that same pattern paper and this has been cut to one inch by four inches and we're just going to add that on here lining it up right with the bottom of the white daisy like so there we go sometimes liquid glue is good because you can um, kind of play with it. Sometimes it's <laughs> that same effect has a, uh, an effect of sliding around on you when you're trying to do stuff, right? <laughs> okay, so some of the pattern paper in this collection has um, leaves on one side and then it has gorgeous pumpkins on the other. So this is the back side with the gorgeous leaves, which are stunning, and I've used them quite a bit. But on the other side, there are lovely pumpkins that are just perfect for fussy cutting out. And you know me, I love fussy cutting. So, so I went ahead and fussy cut a pumpkin. And let me just grab, I need some foam for this. I think I may have, oh, look at that. Just enough little <laughs> pieces. Just enough. I'm just going to put a foam right in the center of my pumpkin and I'm going to touch it onto my card. I'm going to tuck it kind of over over this way a little bit like so and uh, as I was saying I'm using the enjoy these moments stamp of the month and it is such a fun stamp. It's got this gorgeous heart that has all sorts of 
leaves and acorns and maple keys and, and little berries and things. And then there's some separate little leaves, three different ones there. There's a row of leaves, there's a little acorn cluster, there's a little berry cluster, and then all these fun sentiments. And so I decided to use the little leaf stamps. And instead of getting out my markers and coloring, I decided to stamp them onto pine and paprika and toffee paper. And so I've got a little grouping of them here and even some of the little acorns. So we're going to do some decorating on here and add some little leaves. So let's take this little paprika one. So if you are like me and um, want to take a break from coloring or water paint, watercolor painting or anything like that, then absolutely just stamp right onto colored paper and you get a lovely, pretty design. And these are all the coordinating colors for this collection. So it's nice and easy whenever you're looking at a collection and you're looking at the pattern paper and you're like, oh, what, what cardstock can match this? Just take a look at the zip strip if you have one that's still attached or in the catalog and it will list the colors that are in the collection. And then you can just go through your cardstock and find some of those colors, right? Okay, now this last one here, I'm gonna actually add a little bit of foam tape to the back of this little leaf. There we go. A little bit of foam tape, because we're gonna kind of put it in front of our little pumpkin, just overlapping like that. And don't worry about this stem that's kind of sticking there. We're gonna kind of hide that with our little acorns. I'm just gonna put a couple little dots of liquid glue at the top and kind of overlap it onto the leaf and the pumpkin. And I don't even think it needs any foam tape behind it. It can just kind of hang out there with the other pieces, but we need a sentiment on here. And so for my sentiment, I thought it would be nice to pull in yet another color from the collection because I mean, it's stunning already. But you see here on this pumpkin, the little stem, that's our lovely mocha color. So I decided we needed some mocha. So I've got a little strip of mocha here. And what I want to do is actually some heat embossing. So I'm going to bring in my anti-static pouch and I'm just going to apply a little bit to my mocha. Just making sure I got the side I want. Sure, good enough. <laughs> With my anti-static pouch, that just adds a little bit of powder on there so that, um, the blah, blah, blah. <laughs> the embossing powder doesn't stick to everything. Let me see, I also need a scrap of paper. All my little scraps of paper have been written on. Let me grab one here out of the drawer. Oh, I actually have uh, a card I was working on and I goofed it up. So we'll use the card base <laughs> as our embossing powder collector. And actually they work really well. I've done this before. So I have the Happy Fall loaded up on here. So it's actually, they're two separate stamps, the word happy and the word fall. And so we're gonna use those together for our little uh, sentiment. I'm gonna be using the Versamark ink and also gold embossing powder because it's so fun. And I think it'll look nice with that sort of fallish feeling that's happening. So let's go ahead and ink us up with our Versamark. You can see me holding that stamp pad down because Versamark ink is very sticky. <laughs> and so if you don't hold it down, it bounces all around. There we go. Our happy fall. It doesn't even matter if I went straight because guess what? We're going to fussy cut it. You knew it was going to happen, right? You just knew it. So then you just sprinkle that on and give it a little tap, not too much. And you can see, especially well with the gold embossing powder, that this powder is like dry and crumbly looking and um, it's not shiny at all, right? So let's just quickly tip the remainder back in. See, this is why it works good with the, the card bases because you can use it like a little funnel. Tip that back in there like that and close it up because we don't want to have any embossing powder mishaps. And then we can 
get our heat tool going. I like to sort of turn it on and let it start heating up. You will notice whenever I do heat embossing that I lift my paper up off my work surface and that just, it works better when you do that. The heat embossing itself works better because the heat can swirl around it. And it also keeps you from messing up your tabletop. If you have finish on your tabletop that doesn't like heat, <laughs> it's a lifesaver. And hopefully you will see the fun transformation where it goes from dry and dull to shiny and metallic. And it really does go that quickly. Look at that. And I think with that nice mocha um, cardstock in behind, it really makes that gold... Um, gold heat embossing just pop so lovely. So now, of course, we're going to do a little bit of fussy cutting. Not a lot, just a little. We can handle it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my little micro tip scissors, and I'm going to go all the way around, leaving a little halo. Now, if you don't like fussy cutting, you could, of course, just cut it as a rectangle and maybe dovetail the ends. But because our card is so small, that little area of the diamond on the front I don't want to waste any space, right? So that's why I'm going to kind of fussy cut right around and leave a little halo, but not too much extra, so that we get to see the pretty pattern paper and the pretty pumpkin and things that are behind here. And you can just go in and out as much as you want. Some people like just a straight line. I like to add a little bit of a little bit of curve to things all the way around and then all the way across and finish up. One more little snip and we're done. <laughs> okay, so there we go. And I'm going to add a little bit of foam tape just behind where it says fall like that because I'm going to add a little bit of glue just at the end of the happy. I went and put the lid on there. How responsible of me. <laughs> and then I had to take it off because I wasn't done with it. Just a little bit of glue at that end because that end will be sitting on our pumpkin. So then we can just bring this on here, stick it down. Happy fall. How cute is that? And now for just a little bit of bling. If I had gold glitter gems, the little ones, I would totally use them. But as I have run out of the little ones, the big ones seem to be too big for my liking. And so I decided just to use some clear sparkles. Clear sparkles are lovely. And so we're going to add just a little sparkle down here by our little pumpkin. And then a couple little sparkles up here by our title or our sentiment. And there we go. That is our completed card. Now, that was not a hard card at all, was it? We used our paprika cardstock to create the base of this fun diamond fold card that has that nice little interactive -y bit where it kind of pops up. And then we added in our white daisy, our lovely pattern paper from Crisp Air Collection. Of course, the stamps from the Stamp of the Month. I love showing you guys lots of different ways to use that Stamp of the Month because it's always a fabulous set. And even some fussy cut pattern paper, some heat embossing, and a few little bling. And isn't that such a fun little card? And it can stand up. So if you want to display it, it just stands up like that. And it will fit in a standard size envelope, the four and a quarter by five and a half envelope. So isn't that perfect? Not too much extra to have to worry about. I think it would be fun if you also designed it on the vertical as well. And um, yeah, if you guys give this easy diamond fold card a try, I would love to see what you create. So feel free to post a picture of it so I can take a look. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Have a wonderful evening. Again, sorry about having to postpone last night, but mom duties called, and uh, so I had to do that. But we um, 
We'll be back again on Sunday night for Scrap It's Almost Monday, and we'll see you then. All right, toodaloo, bye.